welcome back all of you nana here and then we are into the next day's class that is the second day's class on the procurement actually so let me go there and then share my screen so now <laughs> we'll not go there we'll not have a look at it go down we'll open up the worksheet go to this place let us now open up the worksheet uh, so fusion procurement worksheet is the one so let me open it up so we are now come continuing on this now and then we have now given the values to the value set actually so the values to the value set is now given now completed this so now the 15th step is now complete we will now deploy it also and then afterwards what happened the 18th step is also complete so step number 18 is complete where we are now given the values for the value set for the company we have given two values of 10 and 11 the department 100 and 101 for the accounting 1000 is an asset account 1001 is a liability account 1002 is an expense account and then 1003 is a owner's equity actor so we are given it now we are going to go ahead and then complete our structure creation you know go to the manage private relationship next stop is what we are now going to create a ledger actual so you go there and then have a look at it so now go back to what we are in the process of creating a ledger actual so go back to what i have now opened up the fourth one now right over the fourth one and then there you will now open up the third one double click on it vision enterprise structure so now the legal entity is now created the chart of accounts is now created Right now, we have to go and then create our ledger actually. So the ledger, and then we have to link up all these things. Right? The ledger legal entity has to be linked after ledger creation, and then complete our basic financial elemental structure creation actually. So we'll now go there and then do it. Right? We are now in the process of creating a ledger actually. Now go there. So we'll now go to this Excel sheet now. Fine. Right? Take a copy of the primary ledger. Fine. Right? This is a task name. Right. Manage primary ledger is the task name. We will now go there. We'll go to the system now. Right? Click on it. And then I will now go to the orchestration applications. And then there, I will now go there. And then we will now create our ledger. So click on it. We will now go to the setup and maintenance. We will now go to the setup and maintenance. And then there, what happens? You go there. So click on it. And then we will now click on the search. Now. Right? Click on search. And then paste it. Manage primary ledger. Though. So click on it. So the ledger has got four C's actually. Right? Click on it. And then click on the add I click on plus account and we'll go to add it so my prefix is t01 you must remember your prefixes every day you have to use the same prefix right? t01 i'm going to say primary ledger i'm not putting the primary ledger on. Go there. so take a copy of it and then put on the description and then the chart of accounts it drop down it is starting on t01 now fine right? t and zero if you press t and zero automatically it will go over there t and zero if you press it whatever it will be going over there you choose it now t zero you immediately type it one after the other. Accounting calendar drop down again. What happens? The T zero. If you put it, what happens? That will be coming. So we have created only a chart of accounts and then the accounting calendar. The currency I'm going to use the systems currency. No? And I will not use the USD. Fine, it works very well. Accounting method is what standard accrual. So this will be taught in a what happens? The financial training about how many weights of a, a accounting methods are available. What is the standard accrual of China? Standard accrual. So there are so many with the income analysis, everything is there. So they will all be taught in a financial strength. So having specified all the four, right? The chart of accounts, the calendar, the currency, and then the accounting method. So click on save and close by which what happens, our primary ledger gets created. On the right hand side top, you click on save and close. The primary ledger is now created. So once when it is created, on the query box, we can even query this. We'll now query it and then see. And I will now click on it again. And then in this place, what happens? The primary ledger name. I will now put T01 and then enter now. We enter in what happens, it will show the ledger name, right? And then the status is in progress now, right? So once when you complete all the activities on the financials, the basic activities, then you will now find a tick mark on this. A tick mark will become. So click on the now. Now go there. So, now what happens is we have to go for the specific ledger options. Now, if we take the copy, if we take this as a task, we go there and then put it as such. Now, right? I'm now placing the task point. Entry now. Huh? Oh, put up, put up. Specific ledger options, we go there. And then if you click on the hyperlink on the specific ledger options, it will not throw an error actually. 
it will not throw an error fine whatever not throwing an error but our primary ledger is not coming at all it is now coming somebody's primary ledger so for us to choose ours what happens you should not execute it from the common area and give a cancel so you should not what happens execute the task from the generic area of search actually fine click on that then we have to come to the fsm area so this is the fsm area here what happens you go there and then drop down and then choose financials on the setup on the setup you choose financials and then here in this place you should not query for the specific ledger options but you should query for manage primary ledger not the specific ledger options but you query the manage primary ledger in this place you take a copy and then query for it so this is the fsm area it is a scope specific task the specific ledger specific ledger options is a scope specific and so you have to query on the fsm area with the setup as financials and then go there and then enter it. manage primary ledger now what happens you can now see the third task in the top is specific ledger options so we have to first of all select the scope so that is a point click on the select so click on the select and then here drop down and then go to select and add and then click on apply and go to task so click on apply and go to task <laughs> go there and then here i'm going to query now right? so t01 and then enter now so t01 enter and then now the uh, if you, this is the query mode actually the query mode we are done now and then select it from the left hand side fine right? Click on it, let us say, and then click on save and close. By which what happens? Your primary ledger is now specific selected for your specific ledger options task. So click on save and close. Now you have chosen your primary ledger for your. You can now see the specific ledger options with with yours now. Fine. So scope specific task we are doing only from that place. What is? No go there. So here what happens? If you know financials, you can do a lot of stuff. Fine. In the bottom general processing, period close. Then what happens? You have got intercompany, average balancing, sequencing, everything there. So, but if you don't know financials, don't touch anything at all, and don't anything at all, because we need only some bare minimum on this for doing the procurement action. So, the retained earning over, you go there, put what ten iPhone, hundred iPhone, one thousand three, fine. This is the account you have to put. One one thousand three is the owner's equity account. Fine, give a tap. So go there. So owner's equity now, fine. Then you know accepting it. Fine, you know working, working, and then there's no trying to accept. It does not accept it. And you know accept it. Fine, go there. Come on. So the retained earnings account you have to get. On the right hand side, journal language, fine, drop it down. <clears throat> then here, whatever you go there, you choose American English. American English. <clears throat> American English. <clears throat> okay. So these two things we are now given. Right? Retained earnings account and then journal English. So click on seven close by which what happens? The specific ledger options task is now complete. There are so many things are there, but they are not required for our procurement activity. So we are now only going to test the procurement. So these two are sufficient for our procurement action. So click on save and close. The specific ledger options, which is the third task from the top. The third task from the top, when you're querying on the planet primary ledger, the third task is now completed. Now we go to the second task, wherein what happens is we are going to link our ledger to LE now. So the ledger is now going to be linked to our LE actually. Fine, we are going to do it. So ledger LE linking, we are going to do it. Fine, click on it. With that. This is called assign legal entities to your ledger now. So the scope is already there, our primary ledger is there, for which we will now assign our LE now. Fine. So click on the second task, assign legal entity. In the top one, from the top, it is the second task. So here, what you do is, you simply click on plus. So click on plus, no, fine, click on plus. And then here, we're going to do it. I will now query me LE now, fine, T01. And then click on search, no, fine, click on search. We are searching for it. And then select it from the left-hand side, and then click on apply. We are applying it. So go there. So it is now applied now. Go there. And then click on done, by which, what happens? The ledger LE combination is now established. This is ledger. The lady, you know, if I click on save and close, the ledger LD combination is now established. You know so, having done the third task, afterwards we did the second task, then you go to the fourth task from the list of values, the top from the top. You drag it to the top and then see the fourth task is called assign balancing segment values to legal entities. So, we are going to see balancing segment. Fine, click on it. Assign balancing segment values to legal entities. And then the scope is already there. Fine, click on it and then go there inside there. Well, here, what happens, I will now add. So for every balancing segment, we will now generate the profit and loss statement as well as the balance sheet. Now. So click on plus now, fine, click on plus. I will now say 10. I will now say drop down. I will now choose the 10th company. It may be a realized petrol now. So, go there. so click on seven close. Similarly, we had to add all the balancing with 11 may be a reliance info. And then uh, 12 may be reliance uh, chemicals like that. What happens, it will be there. So everyone has to be added. Then only we can create the balancing. What happens, your profit and loss statement, balancing sheet, segment, balancing sheet for each and every balancing segment actually. But since we are not going to do any financial activity, we will not stop at what happens, one value that is sufficient actually. for our procurement. One balancing sufficient. We will not do everything on 10 only. We will not do on 11 at all. 
So, go there. so we will not demonstrate our procurement only on one balancing and not on another balancing. So click on seven clause by which what happens? Assigning the balancing segment values to the legal entity is now complete. And then here what happens if you go to the top? No, fine, go to the top. <laughs> you have one more thing called assigning balancing segment values to the ledger also. This will be taught in the financial strength. We are not doing this now, fine. We are not doing only this. This much is sufficient for our procurement training, remember. Assigned balancing segment values legal is sufficient. This one will be taught in the financial training. And then they will also teach you a lot more, no, fine. not only this, fine. Because we are now doing only elemental financial structure creation, actually. So initially, what happens? We did the third task, then the second task, then we had done the fourth task. So please, what happens? Maintain the order in which you are doing. The third, second, and fourth, in the top. And then at first, if you go slightly down, fine, go there. If you go down, what happens? You can now see one, <clears throat> what happens? You will be finding, go down, fine. Review and then submit. There is a review and then submit, which is having a scope of primary ledger. And there is one more review and then submit, which will be having no scope. Now, in the bottom, what happens? You go there. There will be one more review and then submit. Fine, it may be there. I'm not sure about it. Oh, God, I'm not able to see it. Now, I'm not able to see it. But if it is there, what happens? Don't use it now. So, this is the only one, the review and the submit with the appropriate scope. Actually. And then the specific ledger options is also available in the bottom also, right? It's there in the third one. So some people, what happens if they go there, will go down. There is one more specific ledger options in the bottom. So somebody will not choose that and then what happens is they will not land up in a problem actually. You'll be having one more specific ledger options not coming at all. Right? Uh, I don't know why. So, right? But you have to see that the number I'm choosing, you know, fine, exactly I'll do it now. Okay. Specific ledger options. So if you get it, what happens is you leave it now. Fine? So here you have one more. Now, fine. Here, this specific ledger option is coming without a scope, actually. Fine. Rather, uh, we, might, we might have done it only with a scope. Now, fine. So, don't do this long. Fine. This is for primary and secondary ledger also. Whereas, we are using only a primary ledger. This one and not this one. Now, fine. Again, what happens? You have to choose what? The third from the top and not the eighth one. Now, fine. Four, five, nine, eleven, G, R, eight, eight. Fine. Eighth one, don't do it. Fine. And then do only the third and then not the eighth. And if you do it, what happens? You will not land up in a problem. So, for this only, you choose the scope and then do it. This one is for primary and secondary ledger. So we are not using a secondary ledger combination. So don't need. So third, second, and the fourth. And then afterwards, what happens? The review and then submit. The review and then submit. Fine. So click on the review. All other things will be taught in the financial training. Fine. We do only a skeleton financial setup. Fine. Click on the review and submit. Go there. Click on it. You're not going to submit it. Click on it. So go there. So everything is on. See on this screen. Nothing to do at all. Fine. You're going to view it. And then in the right hand side top, you have to go to submit. Now. We are now going to review everything. Everything is okay. Fine. Click on submit. By which what happens? We are now submitting the review and then submit financial options. So, so this completes your skeleton financial structure creation. I will not go there. I will not right click and then duplicate. You are not duplicating it. Fine. You are not duplicating it. Fine. Right click and duplicate. <laughs> go there. Click on that. And then here what happens? You go there. And then you go to what? Uh, you go to <clears throat> tools. You go to the tools and then you go to the what happens? The schedule to process. So click on the schedule to process and have a look at it. There will be some concurrency you'll run it. You'll be running as a concurrent. So go there. Click on it. Explain where you're going. And then go there. There's no running. So it's no running, 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 pause. So once when all of them are completed, what happens if you go there? I will not go there. Click on it. I will not go to what? Manage primary ledger again. No. I will not choose this task. Go there. So click on it. I will not choose the manage and then go to the generic task. Manage primary ledger is a generic task, whereas the specific ledger option is a scope specific task. So go there, click on it. And then I will not query my one, fine. So once when all the three concurrence are complete, you will not get a green tick mark on the right hand side. Now. Wait for it and then go there. And then even if it doesn't come, because financials is not doing a lot of setups on the same instance actually. So if those setups are not done, you will not get a green tick mark at all, remember. If you're not getting it, or if you're getting a red, red one, then also you don't worry because we are not going to push any data into financials at all. So no problem at all. Right? Review and then submit will now allow you to push basically, but uh, if you are getting an error now, in this place, any, anything is in a warning or something like that, what happens, you will not get a green tick. So even if you don't get a green tick, don't worry at all. We will not do our uh, transactions and purchasing and then inventory and then finally leave it as such. We will never push into financial. Now you see, everything has got completed. So fortunately for me, everything has got completed. And then if you go to the primary manager and then make a search, now fine, go there, click on enter, now fine, dish you, you get, what happens, you don't get a green tick mark. So even if you don't get it, it doesn't matter. No, no, yes. yes, we are not going to do any financial activity also. So this completes the skeleton financial structure creation. So this is the one of fine. The 24th step, fine. you have to succeed. Even if you don't succeed, but the other ones, you have to be very very cautiously doing. Fine. The, the third one, the second one, fourth one, you have to be done very cautiously. And the, the final one only, the review of it may fail. It doesn't matter. Fine. But the third, second, and fourth task on the managed primary ledger must be very properly done. 
Now, what happens? Sir? Having done the initial, what happens if you haven't done what happens? Sir? The skeleton financial structure of what creation of a ledger, the COA and then legal entity and then linking all in a financial one will not go to the next one, the business unit. So the business unit is a top unit as far as supply chain is concerned. And then this is also a part of a financial one in the bottom. So this is what I'm not going to get a business unit. No, I'll go to the business unit. So go that to I'll go to the managed business unit. Thank you. That's what. And then take copy of it. I'll not create a business unit. And remember, in the field, you will not be allowed to get a business unit because you are a supply chain man. So for either the financial team, the HCM team, or the projects team only will be creating the business unit, the business unit, because it's of a greater importance to them actually. If you're a SCM man, you will not be allowed. But since it is a training, we only have to create everything. And then click on the hyperlink of it for that. And then we'll not go and then create. So click on plus and then we'll create. And then the first one is what? This is a basically a security act. What is security? I'll tell you what, what is security. So if you're having a credit card and then you go to swipe for 5,000 rupees, what happens? It will ask you the four digit pin. And then if you're swiping it for, say, let's say, 1 lakh rupees purchase, then what happens? It will send a OTP to your mobile also. And then apart from giving the four-digit pin, what happens? You had to enter the OTP also. That is an additional security just to ensure that you are the only guy who is using the credit card. So otherwise, what happens if you are going to for five lakhs or something like that, it may even ask you to enter your date of birth or some other extra, some other thing or some executive may even call you that you are the only guy who is not using it or not. So there are multiple layers of security are there mainly to what? Ensure that you are the only beneficiary. Yet. So securities will not vary depending upon the amount of money you are doing it. Similarly, here also what happens, security is of a paramount importance if you are going for a SaaS license. In a software as a service license, fine. Uh, Oracle has now, uh, what happens, they got the SaaS license for implementing it. So they got it. And then the SaaS model authority, they have assured what happens to have what happens, the security at the business unit level. That is what they do. So what is security? We will not see. No see security. So go there. So here, what happens, I will not see the reference data set. Fine. There is one document called reference data set. Now we'll go back here now. <clears throat> I will not go to the what? Fusion procurement documentation. I will not go for reference data set. So there is one document called reference data set. Now. Mm -hmm. I will not say put it fine. Reference data set. So it is not here now. Fine. I will not go to the inventory. It may be in the inventory now. Fine. It may be in the inventory. I have not kept it here now. Fine. Not. So fusion inventory documentation. I will not go there. I will not choose what reference data set. So it is there. So in the inventory, we have one document called reference data set. In the inventory, inventory document is there, fine. Open it up. We are going to see about how exactly the reference data set works. So as far as supply chain is concerned, we have got only three entities which are RDS objects, reference data set objects. One is the location, and then one is the department, one is the job. And there are plenty of objects are there. They are not for supply chain, but they are for financials, for HCM, receivables, payables, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So many models will be using. But supply chain uses only these three. Fine location. Let us take the case of a location actually. Now, what happens? I'm not going to create a little bit detail. Fine. So while you're creating the location, I'll not go there, have a look at it, I'll click on it. I'll not go there. I will not go to what? I will not go to the space. Fine. Right click and then duplicate. I then I will not try to create a location actually. <clears throat> so click on it. You we'll go to the manager locations. So go there, click on it, and then we'll not click on search and no, fine. I will not go to the manager locations. <laughs> Manage location. You now go to the page, click on hyperlink of it. So once when you want to create it, click on plus no, you will now find one reference data set will be coming at the top actually. Fine. You'll be finding one reference data set object. So this is a location set up. They call this a location set. This is a reference data set actually. So we'll now see about what exactly it is. So we will now create, we can even create one data set and then do it now. Let us say I am now creating what happens a Delhi, and then I am now creating a north set. And then I'm going to associate Delhi to the north side. Similarly, Bhopal also I'm associating the north side. And then I'm creating a, uh, a location called Madras. And then I'm now going to associate it to the south set. There, here, what happens? You're not given a common set actually. We can even associate in the city. Hyderabad also the south set. And then I'm now creating a location called Nagpur. And then I'm putting it on the common set. Actually. And then these sets will be coming on this place. Now. And if you go on that, in this place, what happens? You go to the manager's location. So we are now going to see a default set. So the BU will now belong to one of the sets actually. One of the sets actually. So let's say the mo the BU, we are not putting a north set. Now, this BU can very well access Delhi and Bhopal. Apart from that, what happens is Nagpur is in a common set, it can access Nagpur also. Delhi, Bhopal, and Nagpur, it can very well access. BU2 can access Madras and Hyderabad, and then Nagpur also. So if a particular location is available on a common set, any BU can very well use it. That means what? If you are creating a location on a common set, that means what? You are bypassing the security. The security is bypassed. If you go and then swipe your card in US, fine. Right? The US 
will never ask you the four digit pin at all. It will simply transact. That is the biggest problem because my brother has gone to Seattle and then uh, uh, somebody has stolen his wallet actually. And then uh, uh, the transaction started to happen now. Right? The thief has now started to buy things. Right? One by one, it is now coming, coming. He has to rush back home and then in the computer only, he can stop it now, right? give a stop command. So he has to come back. And then before he came back, what happens? His whole total card is drained actually with some eight transactions. He has now fully drained everything. All the money is lost. All the limit, up to limit, he has now bought everything actually. So you don't have any control at all. So this is a very dangerous one. But US is not having the security at all. They are uh, they bypass the security actually. There are all the problems actually. So that is why SaaS model says that whatever you give a security. So if you give a security, what happens? It will be there. But as far as supply chain is concerned, we are not at all interested in security. For example, if the, if the BU one is in the North set, they want to make a purchase order for Madras. Right? They cannot make it because they belong to North set now. But there is no such requirement at all from our supply chain that what happens is the person who is now in charge of BU1 cannot create a purchase order for Madras or otherwise the BU2 cannot create a purchase order daily. There is no such requirement at all. But unfortunately, it is now forced upon. So once it is forced upon, what you have to do is you have to talk to the financial guy or the LCM guy. They will now grant access additionally. Now, BU, BU1 can access these two locations, but what happens is you won't have Madras, they will now grant access. The HCM team will not get access. So there is a 30 page document on your implementation gate about the reference data set. There's a huge one, and then do it. And then there is one shared ATD also. For example, 2 by 10 30 is the payment term available in the finance. And then it belongs to North Set. And then net 15, what happens? It belongs to what? North Set as well as South Set. So one object, this is all, this is all called payment, payment, payment terms is the reference data set objects now. This is one object, this is an object. So one object may even belong to multiple sets also. So that way also can be configured. So all these things will be taught in the financial training, but from our side, what happens, it is not required. So what I'm going to do is I will now create every entity, right? all of our locations, all your department, all your jobs, and then the business, all the business units, all the business units will be created on a common security. So that what happens, the security gets bypassed. So once when it is introduced, you have to talk to the HCM team or a financial team or a project team about how to grant access for these things. So when you are doing the training, what happens, you always create everything on a common security. When drop down, and then what happens, you choose common. So go to the go to the search now. Find on search and then choose common. C O M and then enter now. Find the common set will be coming. I will not do the common set. Common set is what bypassing the security. But if you want to introduce the security, then what happens? You have to talk to somebody. <clears throat> and then give a name now. Find that I will not say the T zero one. I will not say business unit. And for simplicity sake, I am writing everything in small letters. In reality, what happens? You have to put the appropriate what happens with the caps and small letters. Manager is optional. Right? Who is managing this business unit right? is optional. You don't have any functional control. It's only for information about this. And location is also optional. But I will not give a location. Now, if I click on it, I will not go on and click. If I click on searching, I will not say what happens with my T01. So let me give me a master dog's location. Right? Zero, zero is a master dog location. I click on OK. I'm not putting it. So by which what happens, the business unit gets created. Right? So this business unit is now rotating, rotating the location, but it doesn't have any functional control. The location and manager do not have any functional control, but default set is going to restrict them. Remember. So click on save and close. My T01 business unit is now created. Fine, click on save and close. It's now completed. So the creation of a business unit is now completed. Fine, okay. The business unit is now good. Now we are going to say what are the business functions it can carry on. Assign busy busy is the task name. I will not go there. So click on it. And again, this is a scope specific one. If you go there and then try to enter in, what happens if you click on the hyperlink, what happens if it will not work on the generic area at all? So, is it? Quang, 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 it is not shouting them. So it is not allowing you, fine, give a cancel, and then come back to the FSM area. If you are done, and then come back to the FSM area. So from the FSM area, what happens, you go there, make the setup as financials, and then put the task, assign busy, busy the task, and enter. And then here again, you have to sell the scope. Now, they're all scope specific objects. So, whenever you have a scope specific task, we have to query only in the FSM area. Thank you. Click on the select. Now, click on select. And then you go there. I will not drop it down and then select that. And then click on apply and go to task. And then here, what I want to go there. I will not put my T01 and then enter it now. If you enter it, the search is now going on. It will not select it. From the left hand side, is selected now. Right? Left hand side, you go there and then select it. And then go there. So, click on save and close now. What happens? The functions are going to be done. So this this screen is not available in eBiz. Now, there's an additional one when compared to eBiz. So which which functions it can do? Billing and revenue management. If you enable it, what happens? We can very well do it. Collections, you can very well do it. And this is modular in nature. At any point, you can come over here and then enable any functions. So to begin with, I'm not enabling anything. I'm not doing this alone. So now what happens is to create an inventory or the materials management functionality is a must actually. 
If this is not there, we cannot even create an inventory org actually. For inventory org creation, the middle management function is required. Well, brother, I will not create it. Thank you. I cancel. So there is a basic requirement. Thank you, sir. So I am not doing it, and then I will not show you the error once when you do it now. Fine. No, we cannot even create an inventory org. Middle management function is not enabled. I'm not enabled. Now, what about this one? Uh, we will be coming to you a bit later. This is again a set assignment. Again, when you are having a different set other than the common set, then this is a must actually. So this will be fully taught in the financial training actually. And then we are not. We will not do it in the order management training. Fine. We have to do. Fine. It's also must in order management. Now the twenty eighth one and then twenty ninth one. We will not have a look at it a bit later actually. This is again what about a very complex one. Now fine. So we will look at it a bit later actually. Now, next is what? In the inventory, what happens? We are going to go for manage facility ships. So, the manage facility ships is the first activity. Fine. Go there. We will take a copy of it. No, go there. No, go there. Go there. In the inventory activity, what happens? We are going to create. No, click on it. No, close it. No. <laughs> I will not go there. The manage location. Thank you. I cancel. No, click on it. I will not go on that. Create my facility ship. No, I click on that. And then come out of it. And then the task name is what? Manage facility ships. So, click on the hyperlink on the manage facility ships. So click on plus. I will not say is on T01. Everywhere, what happens? Your prefix has to be there. So that what happens? You can do it easy because so many people are working, you know, fine. So to distinguish your entities with others' entities, always put your prefixes there. I will not say facility ship. So the facility ship is coming from that. So I will not take a copy of it and then put in the description of it. The description for that. The code is what? T01. I am putting it. The start time, fine. It is slightly somewhat sensitive now, fine. Eight zero. 8 colon 0, 0, and then space AM. Fine, that way you give it. Fine, if you give it different, it will not accept. Duration is 8 hours, no, fine, 8 hours, and then go on, and then it's hours. So, it's likewise, what happens? You have to get A shift, B shift, C shift, and then the generator shift, whatever way they are working, you have to create that many ships section. Category drop down, I will not say work from office. And the ship detail type, what happens? You go there and then make it as an Fine. Flexible is for flow manufacturing, it is for labor management actually. But what happens for a pure inventory and procurement? None is sufficient. None is required. So, by which what happens? Our facility ship creation is now complete. Fine, click on save and close. You are now completed. So, click on that. So, click on that. Now, the facility ship is now created. Now, what happens? You go to the workday pattern and go to the manage facility workday patterns. This is a task name. Fine, take top it. So, now put it on the space now and paste it. Manage facility workday pattern. Thank you. And then click on the hyperlink on the manage facility workday pattern. Now go there. So click on plus. I'm going to create it. So go there. I will not say the T01. Right? I will not say facility workday pattern. So we are now creating a uh, what happens? Work, work day. We are now creating a workday pattern. Fine. So I take off it. And then click on the description. And then the length is days. Whatever you give it seven days. And all the seven days it's going to work. Now click on it. So click on plus now. Fine, click on plus, <clears throat> and then click on plus. The bottom, what happens? We are going to give a workday pattern. So start day is one, and then I'll say end day is seven actually. And then the ship name is what? I will now put T zero one, and then give it app. The ship will be coming one over here. So by which what happens? You are now created a workday pattern actually. So click on seven close by which the workday pattern is completed. Fine, click on seven close. More done. <clears throat> so we are now completed. Fine, click on done. Now what happens? We go to the next task. Now we go to the next task. Is what? Manage facility schedules. No, I click on it. We will not take a copy of it. We will not go there and then create our facility schedule. Enter it. Manage facility schedule. So click on the manage facility schedules and now you're going to get scheduled. So I will not say it's a T01. I will not say facility schedule. So we are not creating a facility schedule. Thank you. I can't take a copy and then click on the description. Category is what? I will not say is a work. No. Don't use pager because they are now putting bomb in this. No. <laughs> So it is normally effective only for one day actually. Now you make it for four years actually. You go there, click on it. I will not make it for four years. Okay. So now we can do the transactions. Your inventory transactions can be done for four years. After this date, again you have to extend it. So you can even extend for even up to 50 also, no problem. So 20, you can even go up to 50 also. So you can even extend it at any point. Then. <clears throat> so go there, drop it down. I will not choose what? Four, four, five week pattern. Four, four, five week pattern. I'm going to frame with that. And then first day of the week is Monday. It doesn't matter. You can leave it as much. it is active. Right? So this will be fully taught in the planning training. What exactly it means by four, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, four. Everything will be explained in the planning training. Actually, when you understand supply planning or demand planning, training, they will be explaining everything on this. So here, no day pattern. Fine. Click on plus. No, fine. Click on plus. And then go there. And then sequence number is one. No, fine. Go that more. The pattern is what? T01. And then give it a tap. 
is not coming. When you give a tab, it's not coming. Then drop it down and then choose it. Right? Click on search now. And then make a search now. Find the Select it and then click on OK now. Is that is fine. So my facility shift is ready for four years of work actually. Remember, remember to whatever the extra the years now. Otherwise, whatever it will work only for one day now. 29, 24, 29, 24, it will work only for one day. Your transaction, inventory transactions will fail actually. So click on it will now trigger a whatever the error called receiving transaction processor error. If it is having only one day now, and tomorrow if you do it, it will not work. So uh, whenever you're getting RTP error, the receiving transaction processor error, that means what? The date is not effective on the date actually. I click on save and close. No, no. So we are now completed what? You know, giving you a warning, it doesn't matter, man. Right? Uh, because we are now chosen all the seven days actually, it right? doesn't matter. So the warning again, pull up, onga. No, say click on yes, no, fine. Right? So by which, what happens, you know, accepting the warning, no, fine. Right? Okay, okay. <coughs> it may be giving you some other right? thing. So we are now completed, thank God. Right? So we are now completed everything, thank God. Right? Now we are now going to create our inventory order. We cannot create an inventory order because the material management functionality is not enabled at all, thank God. Right? Manage inventory order. No, go there and then we'll not try to create an inventory or so paste it now and go to the manage inventory or and go that call. Oh god, what is this? So there is some mistake on some remove one letter and then query now and click on it. And then it maybe is it not? yes is not a correct one now. I will not say org up to org. I will not query up and click on it. No, sir. It is basically inventory organization. US is not not yes now and is yes actually from yes. Okay, okay. Fine, click on it. And then I'm not going to create fine. Click on plus. I will not go and then create it now. So, so the name I'm going to give what is the T01 is now say is a master. Order. So the first one is a master, I mean master. You're not getting it. And then the code is what? Capital T01. And then I will now put zero. And zero means what? There is no transaction in the master. That is what my convention is. But you can use your own convention, whatever you like. Now, if you go there and then try to query, the business unit will not come at all. If you go there, make a search and find that. <clears throat> click on it. T01. <clears throat> so click on search. Nothing is coming. Go in the, go in the, go on. Mainly because what I was, you are not given what the uh, assign busy busy, you are not enabled the material management function. You will not go to the setup and maintenance, and then here what I was, you go there, click on it, and then you will not give the, the, thing, okay? the scope is already selected. Fine, go that code. I will not enable the functionality. Remember, the functionalities can be enabled modularly. So you know, begin with the material management function. This allows you to create an inventory or and then perform a transaction with the inventory or and then go there, drop it down, and then go there, make a search. Now, if I click on search. And then put over T01 now, find T01. So click on search now, find go there. It will not show you what happens. The ledger and legal entity combination together because we already, what happens, are related. So ledger and legal entity is related. Find choose it and then click on OK, by which what happens is not coming. And then the below legal entity is for the costing purposes. What happens, I will be seeing the procurement costing in this training actually. We will be seeing the complete procurement costing in this training. Find select it. And then click on save and close. This is required for costing purposes. Find click on save and close. Find. That means what? This becomes a profit center business unit also. By putting a tick mark, this BU is now becoming a profit center BU, which you'll be seeing it during the course of time while you're costing the procurement transactions with you. It's a very tough one. I go there. So click on save and close. So this normally is a management business view. Business view. So it is a management business view. Come PCBU, profit center business view also. So if you're having 10 BUs, one of them must be a PCBU actually. Click on save and close. So by which what happens? This activity of what I'm doing it. Now you go there in this place, manage inventory organization. If you go and then make a search now, if you search for it, it'll now be coming. One the chi, we got it. And go to the translate and the select and then click on OK. Now. So now the management view is coming. And then go there. So we are given a default location for this. It's okay. And remember, every org must have one location. And then this location should not be given to any other org. If you go to the legal ready find drop down. You will not you'll get the legal because we already done the B U L E or ledger L E combination by that And then since we have put a tick mark on the below legality, this is also a PCBU. So in our case, what happens your management business unit as well as the profits that are business unit are the same. When you go for the second unit, what happens? I'll be putting only the first BU as a PCBU. So if there are 10 units, you will normally have only one of them as a PCBU, and then the remaining only will be a management BU. <clears throat> so go ahead. If you do not want to make enable a pre-PCBU, don't put a tick mark on the below legal entity. Then that means what? That will not be a PCBU at all. You'll be learning about it during the procurement costing. So later on. So we are not given this much of information. The, is the employees or internal actually not external equipment. Leave it as well. This is what the fixed assets for the financial modules. Go to the top and then click on the next. So we are in the process of creating our master. Org. We are in the kind of process. Of so go there. I will not put my master or go here. Find T01. And then give a tab. Once when you give a tab, it's not coming. Fine, go there. Starting is okay. Schedule is what? Our schedule. Find T01. And then give a tab. Then the schedule is okay. And then locator control determine at submit level is the one. 
that is it fine go there so click on save and close this much is sufficient fine go there we have not seen all those things in the inventory now fine the remaining parameters we have seen now then we have seen on this screen a lot of activities on the inventory now and then go there leave it and then to create an inventory or this much is sufficient now fine go there come on so click on save and close on the right hand side top it is now completed and then we'll now go there and then query your name now fine these are one of them make a search now fine click on it will be coming the master org is not created and then what happens is go there, click on plus, and then we'll now create our first child now. I click on plus. We're going to get the first child. I'm going to say it is a T01. Child one. Child one, I'm creating enough. So take off it. And then here, what happens? The organization is called T. And then what happens is 011. Right. The one. So here, what happens? They'll say T01 and then give a tap. No coming. So the business unit will be coming. So it is again pointing to the location one, but it must be location one actually. Zero was there. I will not what happens. Delete it, then make a one and then give it up. The address will also become one. Right? So remember, one location should not be given to multiple or right? only one to one actually. Right? It should not be given like this. Go there, click on it, and then drop down. And then the legal is one. The PCB is coming. Fine, click on the top, and go there. And then for all the child dogs, fine. You may have n number of child dogs. Child one, child two, child three, like that. Everything will be having a common mass structure. When you create a master, this itself is a master. When you create every child, the same is the master structure. So here the master is same for even the master and chain. For all the master and chain, this is a common master structure. So whenever this org and this org are different, it is a child org. When this and this are same, it is a master org. Drop down and then here automatically I'll not make it the definition. This is not available when you are creating a master. Only for the child dogs, this field becomes irritable actually. We will not see what exactly the reference org a bit later, actually. Not, not reference org. It is mainly used in transportation management, right? And then we will not see the functionality of it afterwards. Starting schedule, whatever you go there, T01, and then give it a tap. One, I go there, count. I will not say locator control determinant sub unit level is the one, find the other count. So give a save and close. So give a save and close by which what happens there is no tap. And then if you make a search, what happens your first child is now created actually. We will now go ahead and then create our what? The second child, second one. And click on plus now, and then we will now create the second child actually. So click on plus, and then we are now creating a second child. So click on plus. The child two, I'm going to create not. So we'll have two childs obviously. Then go there, click on plus, not it. I'll say D01, I'll say child two. And then go there, it's about capital T, 012, the one. The management business unit one T01, and then give it app, not coming. This I will not change it to two. No. The address is also two. Drop down and then choose your LE. The LD now, click on it. The PCB is coming, fine. click on next. And then here again, the master is same now. Right? For every child dog, the master is same. We'll not use the master. The master also the same master only. And then here, it is the definition of, and then it's okay. And then schedule is what? You go there, T01, and then give a tap. Basically, you should go there, come on. I will not say, look at the control determinant, submit to the that. So click on save and close by which whatever is not completed. So for our exercise, we need only two hours now. Right? One master and child, two childs is not done. Now, we are going to perform a type. Even though what happens is every child org or every master org is now given a location, this is not a tie actually. So we have to explicitly tie also. Location and org tie is a must. Apart from that, this also is a must know. This also must be proper and then the location org tie is also a must know. Like answer. We'll not go there. Right. We'll not go to the locations and then we'll not query the location. We'll not go to the manage locations. Too. Manage locations. So go to the manage locations. Fine, go there. So click on the hyperlink of it and then we'll not query all the locations. The T01 is the location, fine, go there. Entering now. Now go to this place, fine, click on it. Go there. I will not query. And then do the day now, fine. Select the master and then click on it and then click on update. So click on update. So this update location is coming, fine. So don't worry about the today. The effective date has got changed, actually. It doesn't matter, fine, click on okay. It's not getting changed, it doesn't matter. So click on okay. <clears throat> it was having initially 1151. Now the date has got changed, now fine, go there. So in inventory or what happens, you go there. T01, you go there and then give you a master lock. Your master. That's it. So the location organization tie is now complete. So click on submit by which what happens? You are now completed this location organization tie. Click on submit. <clears throat> Sorry, Sorry. So it is now complete. Click on Similarly, what happens? The remaining two also will not tie. So go on and select your lock one and then go to edit and then perform an update. Now click on update and then click on OK now. And then will not perform a tie. So go there. I will now say T01. And then child one, and child one, and then go there, and then click on submit by which what happens. The second location is also tied to your org. 
So every location must be tied to our org. And there are some locations where we will not tie a organization at all. I will be coming to it a bit later. They are all called expense destinations. Expense destinations will not have any tie to the org. So they will be discussing about it a bit later. As far as inventory locations are concerned, every inventory location has to be tied to the org. Click on it and then click on update. So click on update. Now they are all inventory locations and so whatever. Everything has to be tied. Expense destinations will not have any tie to any org at all. So go there. T01, I will not choose the second chain. So the tying of the locations and organizations are complete. Okay. And then go there. So click on that. They are not complete. Okay, this part. Then what happens in the 35th is for tying actually. 35th for you now go to the 36th. Then what happens? The inventory is basically a logical org. Every inventory will have one or more sub inventories actually. Now go there. Take off it. Manage sub inventories locate as many as you want. Now go to space. Now go there. No paste. And then go there, and then we will now create what happens at least two. Now, fine. We will now have to say the organization fine T011. So, initially to begin with, I will now have two sub inventors. Go there. So, click on plus, and then I will now create one FGS sub inventor. I will now say the FGS now, right? FGS is a finished goods store. So, take off it, and then what put on the description. Location is a mandatory one because transfer orders will not work if you don't have a good location. So T01, I will not give a location. The tied location will be coming automatically. The remaining we have seen now, fine. You have all seen all those things in the inventory itself, and you're not testing again. So go there. FG is the one, fine. Click on seven close. You're not done. And then what happens? You go and then create a stage sub inventory. I will not click on plus. I will not create a stage sub inventory. Go there. Stage sub inventory. Stage sub inventory. Stage. So take a copy of it and then click on the description. And then again, location what T01, and then give a tab. And then click on save and close. Now we have completed the staging sub notifications. Now, if you have a look at our uh, what happens, your uh, map of your uh, inventory org, no, fine, your uh, manufacturing plant. No, click on it. Now go there. Now go back. No. <clears throat> so here, what happens? You go there. You go to the move orders. No, fine, click on it. EM. If you go to what in efficient mint documentation, point. I will now say. Uh, Man, moment request is there. My max planning. I will now say move orders. Okay. Move V. Move orders. No. Move orders. Okay. So there is a document called move orders. So we have a document called move orders on the fusion inventory documentation. Right. Open it. You go there and have a look. We have discussed about it a lot, a lot, a lot. Right. Okay. So whenever you are manufacturing it in the VIP area, VIP is basically for manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So once we will manufacture it, it will be brought down to the FGS. Right? FGS, FGS. And then we have now seen the picking rules and then what happens you are this thing now. Right? It is operating on loss in first order and first in first order. So what example, for items which are not going to expire over a period of time, what happens it will be first, what happens, uh, first expiry first order. Whichever is expiring first, that will be picked from whatever supplementary and then that will be brought to the staging area. In the staging area, what you normally do is what? You will not clean the finished goods. You will not take the net weight. You will not pack it in boxes and containers. You will not take the gross weight. And then affix the nameplate details. And then mark the statutory warning like handle with care, explosive, etc. Et so these are all the staging activities you will be doing it. And then this varies from what happens to company to company and then depending on the product actually. So whichever product you are shipping it, what happens the staging activities will be doing. So normally what they do is they will not pick it up from FGS and then drop it in the staging area. So there, what happens, you will not do all the staging activities and then pack it and then keep it ready. So once when the vehicle for the customer comes in, we will not pick it up and then put it on this and then perform a ship confirmation to the customer. Some companies will not have a separate staging area at all. So it, the front end of every FGS, the finished goods stores, fine, it will be having a staging activity. So they will have it. But we need a staging. Fine. We need a logic. If there is no physical staging, then what happens, we need a logical staging from the system point of view. So here, what about we are not made it. So this staging may be physical or logical, depending upon how your end client is now processing it actually. So if he is not having any physical staging and then doing all the activities in the front of the FGS itself, on the front side of the FGS, he is not doing all the activities, then what happens? You need a logical staging, remember. Otherwise, what happens if we cannot perform a ship confirmation to the customer actually? So this staging sub-inventory in some companies it will be logical, in some companies it will be physical actually. So great. So at least, but you must have at least one sub inventory because to transact the material, you must have at least one sub inventory. It may be physical or logical, whatever it is fine. At least one sub inventory is a mandatory one. So click on that. So only for the first talk, I'm doing it, not for the second talk. Click on that. We'll not do it as and when the need comes in. 
Now, what happens? We are now going to jump into Hachara Masu. We are going to jump into Hachara Masu. Now, go there and then get a job. job. So, a job is basically a, a grade, basically. Any companies will be saying, junior manager is a job, assistant manager is a job, deputy manager is a job, and then manager is a job. So, it is a level at which what happens? The people are paid, actually. Those who are in junior manager, what happens? All of them will be having a running scale starting from, let us say, 1500 or something like that. Assistant manager will now start from 2500, the pay scales, basically. So, the pay scales are based upon the job, actually. You may be a junior manager mechanical, you may be a junior manager mechanical, chemical, you may be a junior manager operations, you may be a junior manager civil. All of them will be having a common pay scales, basically. So that is why the job is basically, great. so we are going to have a job. Job is a very important one, friend, go there, click on it, and now go ahead, and then create a job. Click on it. So we are going to create three jobs for this exercise, actually, friend, go, there, go to the manage jobs. Look at three jobs. And then here, what happens, go there. So click on create, now, friend, over there. And remember, the job is a, what happens is your RDS object actually, right? Your locations, jobs, and then the departments are RDS objects. And then whenever we create it, we'll lock it only on the common set. But if your HCM is creating it, they will not invariably make it on some other set. They want security actually. Here, because, see, I, I, my boss can promote me. I cannot promote my boss. My boss can sanction my leave. I cannot sanction my boss leave, right? So there are so many interrelated activities are there, right? If I, he can do something, I cannot do the same activity with him. So, because of which, what about the restricted, what happens is they always go on a reference RDS object. So, there are so many RDS objects in human capital management, and then they will do it. And then, if you want a grant and access, they will not do it now, from that side. But if you are only doing it, because I implemented a project for Kuwait actually, where what happens is HCM is not installed, they have not bought the license actually. So, my HCM team, which is sitting in Mailapur, Madras, they were guiding me about how to do all these setups actually. See, everywhere comments it only, and there is an edit. So click on it. I will not say it is a T01. I will not say underscore junior manager. I'm putting it as junior manager. Because I will not take a copy of it. And then what happens? I put the code, no point. Paste the code. Right? So click on next. So click on next. I'm not good. And remember, when you're doing it, what happens? All the jobs must have the same effective date now. That is a very important one. And then if you're creating a different effective date, it will be giving a problem later. On. So, go so drop it down and then make it as a full time. And then regular, I will not make it as a regular. And then there is a level which we'll be using in our supervisor hierarchy and then the position, the job hierarchy. Right? So job level approvals and supervisor level we'll using the level. Fine. I will not choose the level. So 1001. So 1001 is the level. Fine. The below which whatever is not required. So they will all be done only with the HCM team. If HCM team is creating, they have got lot of activities to do. And then what happens? If only a supply chain management team is doing, this much is sufficient for us. Because I did it. And then afterwards, I did nothing at all. So click on submit. But the Kuwaiti company where HCM is not installed, I did only this much. You know, I click on it. And then I will not go on that. What happens the query? It now. Sometimes what happens it will not go for approval actually. <laughs> I will not see whether it is created or not. I will not go there. I will not go for 201. And then make a search. Now I click on search. I will not find what happens it will not have. It will not got created. So click on it. I will not go on that. Create our next one. Now I click on create. I will not create the second job. Now I click on it. If it is not coming, I told you about how to bypass the approval now. Fine. Manage approval. Now I click on it. Now I click on create. Now I click on create. If it is not coming, I told you about how to bypass the approval now. Fine. Manage approval human is a task where what happens sir? The job approvals which are now initiated with the HCM team can be very well bypassed. That has already been taught to you. So remember that and then do it now. If it is not, if you make a search, it's not coming. That means what? It has now gone for approval actually. So how to do it? Fine. Manage approval human is the task. And then from there, what happens? On the left hand side, go to the approvals and then query for the job. And then what happens? Bypass the approval for the position create job creation actually. Then what happens? It will be coming over here. So that we have already seen now. Find locations. And then here also the same thing. So click on create now. Fine. Click on create. And then we are now going to create our second one. And remember, 1151 now. What is the name now? I'm going to say it's what's called, what's called D01. And then I'm going to say Aston Manager. <clears throat> then go there. So take a copy of it and go there. Click on the code now. Find paste it. And go, there. And go, there. go to the next now. I click on next. 1151 comments it. Click on next now. Go there. Go next. Then go there. And then go to the place. So full time now. Click on full time. And then regular is the regular now. Click on the regular. So click on the regular. And then go there. I will now give a level of what? 1002. We'll be using it. There are six methods of approval. One is about yeah, approval by a worker. And then what happens? Uh, next is the automatic. Automatic approval is the first one. Approval by the worker is the second one. And then the third one is approval by approval group. And then the fourth one is what? Approval by uh, job level. And then the fifth one is the approval by position level. Uh, rather, uh, supervisor level. And then the sixth one is what? Approval by position. So all the six methods of approval you are going to see in this training actually. So click on it. And then click on submit. So by which, what happens? The, what happens? This one is now created. So we are now creating what? Assistant manager, we are creating now. Click on it. And then I will now create the next one file called the manager. <coughs> Click on OK. 
and then make a search and find you'll not see the asset manager is also created and then click on create and then you're going to get the manager go there click on it and go there without t01 mgr you're not creating mgr now. so take a copy of it and then click on the code now. so click on next copy down and then click on the full time now and then here is going to be regular and the level is going to be 1003 and then go there. So click on submit by which what happens? The job, all the three jobs are now created. Now, all the three jobs will be retaining in only one department, actually. And you have a search number. All of them will be remaining in only one department. So we are now going to get only one department for our exercise, actually. So click on the number. Click on and then we'll So while you're doing it, what happens again? What happens? Make a check whether you have done it properly or not. Go to the T01 and enter now. And then always make a check now. Find the manager. I'm going to I'll click on edit now, find it, and then go to correct now, not update. I will now see the date of effectiveness. It is 1151 is okay now. I click on cancel, and then I will now have a look at the assistant manager also. I click on assistant. So, assistant manager also will go now. Go there. So, click on done now, find it now. And then 1151 is a very important one. All the jobs must be dependent on the independent assistant manager because later on you will now get some other problem now. So, sit and then create everything on the same day actually. If you are going to create uh, 20 different jobs, it's now 1151. Assistant manager. And then have a look at the junior manager also. The effective start date is very important. This is such a sensitive screen and so whatever they are doing very well. Some people, what happens, will be creating on different dates also, but that will be put with the help of what happens, your, your CM team, human capital management team will review what if you're creating on a different start effective date, how will be the impact on it? And they will review. Otherwise, what happens, you, you give the same date. 1151 is the best date, actually. 111951, right? That is what it is. And that is the best date. So CM has got a reasoning for the 111951 also, fine. So go there, go to the place, click on done, fine, go there. Next word, we are now going to create a department, actually. So department is there. So now it is in the fag end of the day, fine, go there. We'll all do it tomorrow. So tomorrow is a holiday, isn't it? Saturday is a holiday for you, isn't it? Am I correct? Anybody can see. Hello? <clears throat> Saturday is a holiday, no? So now department is the next task. <clears throat> department is the next task. We'll be beginning our third year to start, fine, go there. Uh, can you speak now? Fine. So tomorrow is a holiday, isn't it? Is it a working day or a holiday for you? Holiday, sir. Holiday, no? Fine. Okay. So we'll be having a what session on uh, uh, what was it? On Monday. No? Monday. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So next session will be beginning on Monday. Actually, so there. What happens? We'll now begin the department creation. So bye for now. Bye. 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 Bye.